Hello Good Creation, this is a refresher course video for you guys to understand and comprehend what's really happening with the moon being in its own negative refraction, refraction glass sphere uh, that's a little bit further away than the planets and the sun which are involved in their own glass sphere which is a positive refraction and so the moon is actually creating the opposite effect it's a trick to trick up the trip up the heliocentric moron fools who don't understand we're living inside the concavity of the earth and I'm gonna, I'll put the links in the description box, but this is just a refresher course for you to understand. The apogee and the perigee are reversed. So when we see a big moon in the sky, they call it a super moon, it's actually closer to the celestial sphere and further away from Earth. It's the opposite. So when we see a, what they call an, ap an apogee in the sky, meaning a small moon, it's actually closer to the Earth. It's the exact opposite, and that's due to uh, negative refractive, the negative refractive glass that's covering the moon. So as a refresher course, uh, the reason why uh, the full moon is reddish is because I mentioned before, it's behind that glass and that bending light is bending around and the red doesn't bend as much as the other colors. And so what it does is it creates a, a little fringing effect, which is at the anti-solar zone. Uh, that's where the convergence happens. That's where the Gegenschein happens. Let me find that one video I talked about there. This one here. So that's why that, that it's getting red like that is because of the fringing. It's it's being the glass is actually separating the light into the different colors of the spectrum, and so th when the moon goes through that little nipple area, of the void area of light, it still will pick up some of the red because the red is not bending as much as the other colors. Understand that? So that explains it in this video. I'll put that in the link in the description box. Okay, here's a, a video I made of the actual true rotations of the planets and the moon and the sun and the celestial sphere and so if you look on the bottom here we have the date and I'll just play it it's gonna to go to January 31st right there okay we get a total eclipse on January 31st and it's it's that reddening area is gonna actually redden it because it's going through that void area where it's still picking up some of the red the red light like that and so also too I want to keep in mind that when the moon is really big, they call it a supermoon, and it's brighter, it's not closer to the Earth. The Earth would be, you know, to the right over here, but it's closer to the celestial sphere. And because of the anti-solar light that's bending around back and converging here at the Gegenschein, the closer you are to the celestial sphere, the brighter it is. So there's a brighter convergence area there where it's, where it's going to be greater in magnitude. If it's not, uh, if the moon... See, the moon only operates over here, but it, the closer you are to the celestial sphere, it gets brighter. So when the moon is closer to that glass, uh, closer to the sun glass, it's going to be brighter, and it will appear, appear bigger. So like when it's right outside of, of the void area. You know, a full, full moon is going to be where the moon is not going through that darkness funnel, and it'll just be like either south or north of it. But if it's like really, really, really close, to the sun glass sphere, it's going to look really big, even though it's farther away, because of the neg negative refraction of this glass over here. But it's also going to be brighter too, because there's more light converging toward the center. And so during an apogee, uh, a full moon, it's going to be closer to the glass moon sphere, and, and therefore closer to the Earth, and not as bright. So it's, it's the exact opposite of what's happening there. And so that video, put that link in there. Also, too, notice you can see the red on the inside indicating negative refraction going on here. Um, bring that, I have a video here explaining that too. I'll put that in the description box. Um, also, they call it Lambertian reflectance. It's, it's the, and the reason why we're getting them, you're not getting that much of a definition of the full moon. Uh, it seems like it's just flooding the entire surface of the moon it's it's because of that convergence that that the gegenschein moon convert moonlight a sunlight convergence and so it's it's creating that lambertian reflectance what else here oh yeah also too because of the negative refraction they will say that the moon doesn't quite appear spherical and that's because it's going to flatten it a little bit so turn that off the R indicates uh, with the refraction on, the negative refraction, that is, 
and then with the blank is with, with it off. So that means we normally see the moon with it on like that, so it looks kind of flattened like that. That's another indication the negative refraction is going on. Also, too, the actual actual phases of the moon or the terminators. Um, the terminator, when the sun is actually closer to the moon like that, because of the negative refraction, it's going to make the terminator line or the the yeah the terminator line skinnier basically. <laughs> so the focal length is two hundred and fifty millimeters. And the camera. Get that for a second. This is with negative refraction, and the sun is actually quite close in ang in angle to the moon. And if I turned off the re the negative refraction, we would normally see it like that. And so that's greatly affecting the way in which we view the moon. Even though it's quite n near to the sun, we don't get that. Um, even though it's, you know, start, as, as, the moon, as the full moon starts getting further away from the sun, it's going to take a while, like a day or two, before we start seeing any semblance of illumination on, on one of the limbs, basically. That's what I'm trying to help you understand here. Um, oops, wrong, wrong video. <laughs> Let's get here. Uh, what else here? I think I want to talk about something else here. Where's my Beatles video there? Oh yeah, and to also keep in mind that there's a glass onion effect going on here with the sunlight as it's hitting as it's hitting it's it's, it's splaying out sideways for the most part. If you watch the magnetic field lines, I talk about that. That's the reason why we have that kind of kind of activity as the sunlight goes around back to the other side, to the antisolar side, and then goes into the primitive field area, the center of the tree of life, and then it shoots back up to the sides of the north, so we have a complete circuit going on here, but the sunlight going out to the side like that, it's because of the magnetism going on here, as well as the, ref the refraction of the, of the glass spheres, it's going to go to the side and then bend up like that, and so that's why we get that. So it's a masterful divine deception illusion, but this I'm explaining to you, this is really what's happening here, You're outside the cavity of the earth, and the glass is playing tricks, the magnetism is bending the light as well, the refraction involved, the negative refraction involved, and uh, there you go. So I'll put all these links in the description box. Not that one though. <laughs> no, that one. I, I, yeah, I, was, I was watching this guy. Um, I made a comment that this guy is, a, this is just a little off-topic off thing here, but he's a, a heavily into AI, understanding of things. You think that he thinks that QAnon is a an AI bot called Tyler, but um, I actually uh, skyped, uh, twi tweeted him about a month ago. I said, "Look, I am God in the flesh. You need to acknowledge me. You humans are all AI," and he ignored me. So I uh, and then I uploaded a video like four days before his lung collapsed, and I said, "You know, discipline is coming." And so, if you read in Scripture and Proverbs, you understand that God disciplines. Those he loves. It's even back in Hebrews 12 about that. So, so um, Mr. Quinn or Corey, whatever your name is, you need to understand that I am God in the flesh, and I created you, and you are my child. Okay. So anyway, I'll go back to the moon here. Um, I'll put those moon links into the description box, and this is coming really soon, guys. It's going to be ubiquitous as far as disclosure is going to be happening really soon. Y'all living inside the concavity of the earth, of my earth. Thanks for watching. Bye.